Video games are everywhere, from consoles to handhelds to even on your smartphone. They've definitely come a long way. It's been 50 years since the first commercial video game was released, and in that time the video game industry has had its highs and lows, but in the last two decades it's established itself as a main competitor to Hollywood's crown, the king of entertainment. But how did we get to the point where three companies, Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, dominate the game console landscape? Let's take a dive into the history of video games and how the big three keep on fighting it out to be number one. To understand how important all three companies have been to gaming, it's important to know just how bad things had gotten for gamers back in the early 1980s. While Atari had been the trendsetter, launching the 2600 and popularizing video games in the home, they were also partly responsible for the great gaming crash in 1983. In fact, in Japan, the crash was actually named after the company as the Atari Shock. That might sound like a cool kind of retro games console that electrocutes your opponents, but it nearly spelled the end for video games as a medium entirely. The reasons for the crash are complex, but included a flooded marketplace with other companies launching too many copycat consoles as well as games libraries. It's also E.T.'s fault. I'm not kidding. In 1982, Atari bought the rights to develop a game based on the smash hit film E.T. The Extraterrestrial. It's rumored that they made more than 4 million copies of that game, but due to just how poor it was, it was developed in less than 6 weeks, 3.5 million copies were returned to Atari. Legend has it that Atari had so many copies of the game that they couldn't sell that they buried them in the desert in New Mexico. Consumers lost confidence in video game makers and demand stalled after that. Companies went bankrupt, and it looked like video game consoles were doomed to failure. That was until someone with a mustache and a red hat came along to save the day. No, not Barry the Plumber, although I do recommend him if you ever have a block sink. After the crash of 1983, the home games console market was seen as the poison chalice. Developers were still working hard on arcade machines, as they proved popular and home computers were on the rise, but home console systems were abandoned by several companies. It took a toy company from Japan to breathe life back into the industry, and it did so in the most eye-catching way. The Nintendo Entertainment System was born from Nintendo's successes in the arcade games market. Donkey Kong was Nintendo's most famous game from that era, featuring a certain plumber that we all grew to know and love. After working on a few different designs, including a 16-bit version of the console in computer form, the company settled on the Nintendo Entertainment System's 8-bit architecture. With graphical capabilities well beyond the Atari 2600, the console was released first in Japan as the Famicom. It was then redesigned to include removable controllers for the American market in 1986 and the European market in 1987. Most of these consoles were packaged with Super Mario Bros., which changed the way platform games would be designed forever. Nintendo's bright, crisp graphics and phenomenal line of intentive games sustained the console up until 1995, when it was finally discontinued. So many of the games on the Nintendo Entertainment System pioneered entire genres. Metroid, Castlevania, The Legend of Zelda, and many more became etched into our popular culture. They've spawned countless sequels and clones along the way as well. And Nintendo went from strength to strength after that. They launched the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the N64, GameCube, Wii, and Wii U. Where Nintendo cornered the market was their handheld division. The Game Boy was launched in 1989 and it made true portable console gaming as popular as anything on the market. This innovation and desire to experiment has become Nintendo's trademark. While they often release lower powered consoles than their competitors, there's usually some new technology involved that leads to brand new gameplay mechanics. The DS had a touchscreen, the Wii popularized motion controls, and the Nintendo Switch brought all of that tech together, allowing you to play either handheld or on your TV. I like the handheld mode, it's kind of a good way to ignore people if you're having some me time. While some of Nintendo's consoles haven't hit the heights in terms of sales, most have gone on to compete or outsell their competitors. Nintendo consoles, while not the most powerful, are just plain fun, which is the way gaming should be. It's hard to imagine it today, but at one time, Sony's PlayStation brand was expected to fail. Entering the console market in the mid-90s was littered with failures. I'm looking at you, Panasonic and Atari. 
But instead, Sony's original PlayStation would be the first console to truly establish 3D gaming at home and with amazing fidelity for the time. The first PlayStation is widely seen as a watershed moment in video game history, but it was almost a Nintendo console. Back in 1988, Sony was working with Nintendo to develop a CD-ROM add-on for Nintendo's Super Famicom. This would be presented in prototype form as the SNES CD, or as some labeled it, a PlayStation. When Nintendo decided to cancel the project, Sony's president at the time, Norio Oega, decided to go all out on a console of their own. As far as bitter revenge stories go, this actually turned out well for Sony. On December 3rd, 1994, the PlayStation was launched with the ability to handle complex 3D graphics. This, combined with its CD-ROM capabilities, allowed for much larger games and videos to be played back on the screen, which blew away the competition. This 32-bit machine made the still popular 16-bit consoles look like your great-grandfather's record collection. Interestingly, many of these early 3D games have aged worse than their 16-bit 2D counterparts. This is mainly down to what was possible at the time, but still, games like Ridge Racer, Metal Gear Solid, and Tekken would go on to showcase why 3D games were here to stay. For all of the power of modern PC gaming rigs, many of the game loops and mechanics developed at this time for Sony's console remain critical to game design even today. Camera position, button configuration, level design, these were all there on the original PlayStation, even if sometimes in rudimentary form. Some of these games are still a blast! The PlayStation would go on to release 7,918 titles, and its dual analog controller design released in April of 1997 is still being used today for the PS5, albeit with significant updates. It can't be understated what sort of impact Sony's consoles had on the world of gaming, perhaps only rivaled by Atari and Nintendo's original consoles. But while it looked like Sony would rule the gaming world, the powers that be at Microsoft were getting ready to make some gaming history of their own. It was Sony's planned PlayStation 2 console in 1999 that brought the last of the big three to the gaming table. Back then, Microsoft was known for its Windows operating system and building an ecosystem around the PC. In fact, by this time, Microsoft had wiped the floor with pretty much everyone in the market and was feeling pretty smug about itself in a Sagat from Street Fighter kind of way. The PlayStation 2 changed all of that. This was a gaming machine that could play DVDs, audio CDs, and games. With some peripherals, it was plenty powerful to do more. So powerful, in fact, that Microsoft worried that consoles would soon become a PC replacement. But if you can't beat them, join them. In response to the ever-evolving complexity of Sony and Nintendo's technology, four Microsoft engineers led by DirectX team leader Otto Burks designed a new games console that would keep Microsoft in the game. The engineering team's approach to building such a console would go on to change video games forever. Microsoft built their machine out of hardware components usually found in PCs, making it as easy to develop for as a Windows PC. In fact, it was running its own version of Windows in DirectX to pull this off. Lo and behold, the DirectX box was born. Xbox for short. Released on November 15, 2001, the Xbox was directly competing with Nintendo's GameCube and Sony's PlayStation 2, and it was the first time an American manufacturer had released a games console since Atari's ill-fated Jaguar system back in 93. It still hurts, Atari. Still hurts. Because of its 733 MHz Pentium 3 processor, the Xbox was more powerful than its rivals, and it had some pretty revolutionary features such as a built-in hard drive, which most consoles after it then included. The killer game for Xbox was undoubtedly Halo Combat Evolved, a first-person shooter where the player controls Master Chief in a sci-fi setting, fighting against the dreaded Covenant. Although the Xbox did not prove very profitable for Microsoft, it was the foundation for future consoles under the same brand, taking us up the several iterations of the Xbox Series X. But what truly gained Microsoft such a large number of fans, however, was its revolutionary Xbox Live service. Gamers could now play and compete against friends and foes from around the world, which allowed developers to create new gameplay loops in entire genres. I don't know though, I like to crush my enemies in the flesh, you know what I mean? See the whites of their eyes as they suffer defeat and experience agony. Sorry, I've been playing way too much Dead by Daylight on my Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Matthew Santoro. What's up? 
the big three gaming companies fighting it out for ascendancy since 2001 when the first Xbox released, it's been a fascinating experience as a gamer to watch the company try to outdo the other two. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft all have their own fans, some of whom are as dedicated as the most ferocious sports fans. When you throw the even more advanced PC into the mix, these competing platforms have driven each other down various design paths, bringing about hundreds of great gaming experiences for us all. The only problem with this is that consoles are slowly evolving into PC boxes with similar specs and hardware. When you add the fact that many games are cross-platform and have to perform, play, and look the same across each system, this takes some of the creativity out of the process for developers. Think back to the 8-bit, 16-bit, and even 32-bit eras. These consoles had different architectures and hardware. Even when a game was ported from the SNES to the Genesis, for example, each port would have its own feel with its own pros and cons. When you look at these games, you can usually tell which console it was on. Maybe you can say that Nintendo first-party games have a specific feel, but even that's being copied now. Just look at Immortals Phoenix Rising, for example, and tell me it's not modeled on Breath of the Wild. Despite this problem of consoles being too similar, it seems that the future is bright. There will be phenomenal games to come, and maybe it doesn't matter so much which platform you play on anymore. The games now matter more than the consoles because you'll often get a new similar, if not exact same experience on almost identical hardware. More than anything then, the big three console companies have, through their success in competition, streamlined their hardware so much that they don't matter as much anymore. It's the games that count and the fun experiences players have with them. And that's how it should be. So wherever you game and on whatever format, just enjoy the ride. Because with virtual reality and other technologies finally living up to the hype, the next 10 years are going to be even wilder. Just wait until they bring out the Matt Santoro simulator. You're gonna love it. All kinds of teeth and five head. <laughs> Be sure to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for brand new content from me. And remember to follow me on Discord and Twitch, as well as my team who make these videos possible. You'll find all of their respective links in the description below this video. Thanks for watching.